So here are seven basic things to keep in mind as you're looking at someone else's syllabus. The first thing is, are there good practices that encourage contact between students and faculties? Do you have a welcome message? Uh, is there a prominent announcement area that appears on the Blackboard website or whatever the learning management system is you're using? Uh, do you hold regular office hours? Do you get back in a timely manner? Do you have good contact with the students? Secondly, is there reciprocity and cooperation, which means effective discussions, uh, collaborative course assignments, use of study groups, maybe an icebreaker the first day of class so people get to know each other, uh, an explanation and criteria for what makes a good discussion even in an online format. Are you creating a context for learning amongst the students? Remember, you're not doing 20 independent studies. Principle three, good practice encourages active learning. What do we mean? Are they writing, speaking, and using different forms of self-expression? Are you thinking and talking about the process of learning and how your subject fits into that and the outcomes and objectives that you have in mind for the student in the course and how they fit in with the assignments? Are there collaborative learning activities? Think about active learning. Even though online courses tend to be passive by nature, since we're not in a face-to-face -face context, Think about how the activities and the things you do can promote action in learning and activities of learning. Do you give good and prompt feedback? Principle four. Are the feedback methods explicit? Can students submit draft assignments prior to when they are due? Do you really have a meaningful rubric? and meaningful evaluations of student papers that not only assign them a grade, but also give them some information on how to improve their research? Do you provide some examples of student work that can be a guide for them to think about in terms of progress? Number five, emphasizing time on task. Do you have clear assignments and due dates? And do you also tell students how long you expect each assignment will take them to complete? Do they take into account the nature of the target audience? If you are teaching a course that meets every Tuesday and Thursday, especially online, are you really giving them enough time to do the reading and prepare uh, materials in the instance that this is an adult course where they might be working during the day? Number six, do you have high expectations? Do you describe how course learning goals and assignments are designed to help students achieve goals set out by your objectives and outcomes? Do you have frequent feedback provided to the students through written explanations and detailed information? I know a lot of online professors, too, are just recording audio and sometimes giving that to students, which sometimes can be a very helpful way of relaying information because they can hear in my voice where I'm thinking positively and where I have some concerns about things. And lastly, principle seven, good practice respects diverse talents and ways of learning. Do you have alternative assignment options uh, where they might do a podcast instead of a short paper? Do you have supplemental materials related to papers so that they have some sources of information to begin with and the kind of information they ought to be looking for? Uh, is there a positive online climate where students are encouraged to seek assistance with course content and learning activities if needed? Remember, you can have a TA for the course. The TA can be spending time with the students and working with them on their papers and their assignments. Those are just a few things to keep in mind, and that's a quick laundry list, I know, but it's a way to help you divide your thinking into discrete categories for doing a peer review. As you are undertaking the peer review, remember this is not a departmental review or a formal process put on by a unit, which ordinarily is part of a process of tenure or evaluation or something like that. Your role is different. 
you want to maintain a positive atmosphere and a positive ideal between the two of you. So you can provide advice, but you're not praising or criticizing or necessarily even putting a numerical value on the syllabus you're looking at. Remember, you might ask them to review your syllabus. So you need to somehow establish a, a mutually respectful relationship in the same way you do with your students in an online course. So if you want to think about that a little, you could listen to Bing Crosby and the Andrews Sisters version of Accentuate the Positive. Your syllabus is your most important document in terms of relaying information about the course. It's the same in a regular course, it's the same in online. So let's start by thinking about what are the elements that you need in a basic syllabus. And there's a link here back to the CTRL website. Do you have the basic course information? In an online course, this might also include some technology needs. Do you have to have broadband? Do you need any plugins of any kind? Do you need a high-speed computer? Do you need to buy software just like you need to buy books? Is there access to free software and materials or electronic libraries that are part of the course? Is your course description inclusive of what they're going to be learning and some examples of the kind of questions they'll be asking and the research they'll be doing? Do you have all the required textbooks and materials? And increasingly these days, that is a combination of online and hard copy things. Are your course objectives and your student learning outcomes both clear? And are they aligned to support one another? And do those two elements then align successfully with the course requirements and expectations delivered through your assignments? If you could make a table that matches all these three things up for single tasks, outcomes, objectives, and learning requirements, then you're really having a well thought out and rigorous course of action in helping them getting from point A to B in learning. I mentioned that in your syllabus, you'll need to have some description of the technology available to the students of the course in the same way that you might give them where the classroom is in a normal course or when it meets. Uh, there'll still be rhythms, even in an asynchronous course online, where courses might begin and end every Monday at 8 a.m. in the morning and start anew, or they might meet twice a week and a quote unquote class session lasts for three days. Sometimes the instructor will take Sunday off. But think about these technology elements here that the students really haven't ever encountered in other types of courses before. They don't know what a good online discussion is. You need to provide examples to them of that to make sure that they don't descend back into I am speech or some of the let's say not professional discussions that are often held in online fora and you need to give them examples of what are good and bad discussions that they can see from. Usually after about the first or second day they get the idea but you need to be very explicit about all the technological components. I even include a screenshot from Blackboard to show what the tabs are in the course and how you get around the course and what's under each tab. 
It's sort of a different way of organizing your course. Think about the role of the technology in the course syllabus that you are evaluating. Think about the instructor themselves. Is there the right amount or an optimal amount of technology given the subject? But also, where is the instructor in terms of their development of online materials? I know I've had a lot of instructors who get so excited they want to do Facebook and Twitter and make videos and use an LMS and do a WordPress and have all these technology things going on and it's their first time they've taught online. So think about where they are in their career because over time you can gently add layers of technology that you can perfect and hone over time, but each one takes a little bit of getting used to and you'll have to see these things in action before you really get a sense of how well they work in a particular class or a particular format. And as you think about where they stand, whether they are inexperienced or experienced, take a look at the next slide which is a gauge of their enthusiasm for technology over time, uh, which reflects a beginning period of elation, then disillusionment, and then a general rise in appreciation.